swear. <laughs> Step number one, basically the holy grail as far as I know for finding free campsites is a website called freecampsites.net. It's a crowdsourced website where people post different places that they've stayed in and they haven't had any issues. And it can be anywhere like the side of a logging road where you can actually like set up a tent and have a fire and stuff. It can be a rest stop. It can be a Walmart parking lot. It's all sorts of things. People have just posted, hey, I stayed in my tent here and everything was okay. I parked my RV here for eight hours and slept and no one bothered me, that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's hop into that there technological box and let's show you guys an example. So we're gonna open up our no-name browser and go to freecampsites.net. Here you'll see a map pop up of North America. As far as I'm aware, this is only super popular in North America. I haven't tried it for things like Europe or Australia. Sorry, this is mostly a North American video. We're gonna just type in an example real quick. So I'm from the Toronto area in Ontario, Canada. So we're gonna try that. And if you zoom in, you'll see, uh, yeah, not really too much going on in Toronto. Probably not the best example. Uh, scrap that example. We're gonna go with something that's closer to an actual national park. One of the national parks that we loved on the trip a ton was Glacier National Park in BC. This is the Canadian Glacier National Park, not the one in Montana. So you can see all of these little green tents around Glacier National Park. And these are spots that people have actually pinned free places to stay. Green means free. There's some paid ones that come up in red, but just have your eyes out for the green ones because that's what this is about anyways. So the town that we actually stayed in was Golden. I believe it was this site in particular, and that's parking in front of their little rural airport. There was like three or four parking spots and it was a great place to stay. It was right by the Columbia River. We got lulled to sleep at night by a river. It was awesome. There's other places in Golden. You can see there's an old truck weigh scale. So I guess this is where they used to weigh trucks and now it's abandoned. So people sleep there in their cars. There's the Chamber of Commerce in Golden, which I guess lets you stay in their parking lot. As you can see, there's tons of places to stay on here. It's a super awesome resource and it was our first one that we went to. Freecampsites.net is not a one size fits all solution. It does struggle when it comes to finding places to sleep in cities. That being said, let's cut it some slack because sometimes it's even hard to find a place to park for free in a city, let alone sleep for a full night. Which brings me to step number two, which is allstays.com. If you aren't already aware of it, Allstays is a website similar to freecampsites.net where people post different companies and businesses that allow you to park in their parking lots overnight. Psst, Walmart's kind of a terrible company, but they allow you to stay in their parking lots overnight for free. And I'm kind of willing to sacrifice my morals for a free place to sleep. If you head to allstays.com, I'll link it below, you'll notice that it's geared mostly towards RVers, but if you're sleeping in your car, it's basically the same thing. If you're sleeping in a tent, on the other hand, you might not have as good of a time with all stays because there's a lot of parking lots that don't allow you to pitch your tent unless you set it up in the corner of a Canadian tire parking lot because you have a mouse in the back of your car and you are trying to kill it with mouse traps and peanut butter. Moving on. Step number three, let's say you've crossed a bridge into a magical land and you find yourself eating kale and gluten-free things and you're in a town where no one believes in chain businesses. Well then you might not be able to use all stays because you won't find that golden beacon that is the Walmart sign. At this point you might need to get a little bit more creative. So step three is to go try and find local low-cost camping or hiking guides or local information. For us Canucks up here in Igloo land, we have these back road map books, I think they're called. Yeah, this one is for cottage country, Ontario. But when we were on Vancouver Island, we went out and got one of these for the island and we use that heavily because it turns out BC has these recreation sites that are basically campgrounds that are unmaintained but free to stay at and they had like fire pits and nice places to park and set up your tent. They were actually the best campsites I think we had all trip. 
Check out how amazing this is. Got the car. We've got our table with all our stuff set up for dinner. Alana's just chilling in the tent reading. And over here, my favorite part, a rope swing. Yes. And then out here, still tons of space. And as you walk out, we have a nice waterfront up here. This is gorgeous. That was just one example. We had a rope swing. A free campsite with a rope swing. Yes, please. So for you Americans, I think I found an equivalent to these. It's America's Guide to Low Cost Camping, something along those lines. Anyways, I'll link this and the American version in the description, so check that out. This is definitely a worthwhile option if those other online resources aren't working for you. Step four, I hope you're not panicking too much. There's still options out there. This step I found does take a little bit more forethought and planning just because it, it requires a little bit more digging, more research, and that is to find crown land, or in the US it's called BLM land, and the states also has what's called national forests. And basically this is land that's owned by the government and is sanctioned for free public use. So if you find crown land, you can just go and boondock on it, which means you can just pull up with your car and your tent and just camp there for free overnight, which is awesome. The only thing that is kind of frustrating about this approach is that, I don't know if you've ever noticed before, but governments don't have the greatest websites sometimes. Sometimes they're clunky, it's hard to find exactly what you want. Some provinces, some states are better than others, so I can't really post one link, but if, for example, you go into the Googles and search Ontario Crown Land, it will come up with like an atlas that has all of the little patches of Crown Land that are dispersed throughout Ontario. This is sweet because it's boondocking out in nature, your proper camping, and you're not sleeping in your car on asphalt with the risk of waking up in the morning in your boxers in the middle of a Walmart parking lot with a kid staring at you. Let's not talk about that. But give it a shot, it worked out really well for us. Sometimes these crown land, BLM land patches end up on freecampsites.net because people have stayed there and they post that it's crown land and then you're good to go. You don't even have to use this step. And finally, our last step, which at this point is more of a long-term step, or I guess more of a mentality to use on the road trip, and that's just to be a kind person. Be friendly, be approachable, talk to people when they're being nice to you, you know, reciprocate. Be, be a happy, go lucky, awesome person out there because you never really know who you're gonna meet or what's gonna happen. Example, we were out in Ontario at this canyon lookout point, but we just stopped at it because we wanted to just take a quick look. And we saw this older couple there walking around and uh, we saw them at a couple vantage points. And then right at the end, you know, they, they decided to chat with us and we were like, okay, cool. You seem like really nice people. And we, we chatted for a while. They were telling us about how they were heading from the west to east and we were going from east to west. It was this whole long conversation. It was great, super nice people. And at the end of it, the older woman was like, hey, have you ever heard of woofing? Yes, we have wanted to volunteer on a farm for so long now. She's like, yeah, my nephew actually owns a farm. And so through them, when we were in BC, we stayed and woofed on a farm. And that was a week of free camping on the farm and free, free food. And we volunteered there and that was a great experience. The story doesn't end there though. We worked hard on the farm. We were kind to the hosts that were having us and the mother of the man who owned the farm was this super sweet lady and she actually lived in Victoria, BC. So by the time we got to Vancouver Island and we were in Victoria, she offered to let us stay at her place for two nights, you know, fully free of charge. We got to shower, we got to sleep in a comfy bed and just through sheer kindness and generosity, we got some free camping. So that's just something to keep 
in the in the back of the head in in your man bun throughout your whole trip is just to be kind and you never know what's gonna happen all right that's about it from me i hope you guys enjoyed this video i think that's all i can really talk about the subject but if you have any questions whatsoever let me know in the comment section below or even if you use some of these tips and they worked out for you and you found a sweet campsite i'd love to hear about it in the comments too give it a like because it means a lot to me guys if you found this information useful i'm going to be making more videos like this based on the experience we had from the road trip so hit that subscribe button because i'd love to have you guys around we can all just kind of hang out in my little corner of the internet that's kind of creepy okay i'm gonna go